this afternoon, isolated communities were snowed in for their fourth day in a row. In Blessington, the Gardaí called in the army helicopters to deliver locally prepared food parcels to cut off mountainy areas. With deliveries of dried milk, tea and sugar, they flew out over half-frozen lakes, huddled groups of livestock, roads blocked with snow and abandoned cars. They dropped supplies this afternoon at the Wicklow villages of Lacken, Kapur and Ballynockan, where the locals gave them a relieved welcome. We've just got in here to Ballynockan in the Wicklow Hills, where they've been snowed in since last Friday without food. In fact, they just got their first supplies of food dropped in here now by the army helicopter. Um, it's a village of about 200 people. It's been difficult enough to survive. And we're just going to talk here to Mrs. Uno Donovan, who has been trying to survive with a small family. That's what right about there. food? What, 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 what were you lacking here? Well, bread mostly and milk. Yeah. Primary things. Luckily enough, had a few supplies in the press which hadn't been used for a mm. while, so yeah. we used up those. Well, if the army hadn't come in here now this afternoon, what were you going to have to do? Well, we have no meat and no bread. I had baked some yesterday, all right, but yeah. um, other than that... Had it got to the stage that they were hungry? Uh, just today, I'd say, we're at the last, yeah. at the very last. So what's in those food parcels now? Well, I believe there are rashers and sausages and dried yeah. milk. And how long will that, will that keep you going? Well... I reckon about four days. The livestock isn't too bad. I had some fodder and stuff on the side for them. But uh, it was the food stuff like, that was really running short. We were, we were, all the people were really complaining today about no food. Yeah. So we had to ring up and try and get in supplies. But you haven't lost any sheep or anything like that? No, not as yet, no. Yeah. Of course, you're also a publican. Do they find a bit of comfort in the pub? Ah, they do, yes. <laughs> 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 did, the, did, the, did, did the sales go up? The sales have jumped well, tremendous. You're an architect. <laughs> you work in Dublin, but you've been snowed in here since Friday. Do you That's think it should have taken that long no, before anything was done? No. Uh, the county council only gave, uh, I believe, the clearance to bring in uh, private contractors to clear the roads uh, at 3 o'clock yesterday. That was Sunday. Yeah. Uh, that could have, in fact, have been done on Saturday morning. Even with the blizzards on Saturday as well? Uh, there were no bl blizzards yeah. around here on Saturday. It was a day like today. It was a bright uh, day and there was no snow. Uh, well, how near did they get? I mean, did you have problems with funerals or anything like uh, that? Y y y the next village to us, uh, Valley Mount, which is about two and a half miles away, uh, the road was cleared into that uh, to get uh, a funeral out. Um, yesterday and that was done by a private contractor who was brought in by the people who were arranging the funeral. The county council uh, didn't do that and the road clearance was stopped in Valley Mount. Yeah. Why didn't they do it, do you think? Uh, they said there's no money. Ms McEvoy, you're the local officer here for the Red Cross. Yes, yeah, what have you been able to do for well, old people? We have been able to do very little unless I uh, visit them when uh, the blizzard went over and there are, few, very few, uh, there are a few old people here, one in particular 89 years of age, which I'm only after coming from today. And uh, um, I was on to the doctor this morning, and he's, uh, well, he's not that good. And we could need doctor at any time. There are a lot of old people around about. So you haven't been able to get a doctor into this uh, Well, it wasn't really necessary but at the moment, but if it was, he would have had to be lifted out. Yeah. Like, and um, also I was on to um, okay. the county council, the overseer, as late as last night, and he said he had he had um, uh, bulldozers, but he had got no authority from the engineers. And I put it to him that the government had uh, made a, a statement that they were to uh, put whatever they wanted on. And he said he was putting them on today on the Valley Mount Road, which I think there's one on it at the moment. Do people here feel angry at the fact that nothing was done for oh, yeah, so I long? would say they do, yeah. 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 At this stage, uh, the first day or two, I suppose, was a bit of a novelty, but at this stage, I'd say, yeah. So how long will places like Ballynockham be left out in the cold? Must they wait until the thaw comes? And has the process of re-establishing contact with cut-off communities been any more efficient or prompt in other parts of the Wicklow Hills? Joe Little reports. We're now approaching the Turlock Hill Generating Station, where the ESB want this Army Air, Air Corps helicopter to examine the upper lake where there seems to be some freezing around the pipes, which of course will stop the generating station from operating if it cannot be cleared. The only way of looking at these pipes is from this helicopter. 
Dr. Liddy, what was the condition of the patient you just visited? He was very poor, but I've been attending him for a while and I was able to bring what I needed to get him fixed up a bit better. And hopefully when the weather is a bit better in a few days, I'll be able to see him again. How physically isolated was he? Well, the only way we could have got to him was by helicopter. There was no other way possible to get to him. And there was nobody in the house who could help him? There's an old lady in the house with him, but she is partially disabled with a stroke, which she had some years ago. So the two of them were there on their own. It's great to be able to get to avail of this service to go and see people. Uh, the only thing is not to abuse it while it's, while it's there and available. I'd say since uh, the introduction of helicopters in 1963, uh, it's by far the busiest time, I'd say, in the last few days, and I'd say in the next few, we few weeks, maybe even for that matter, it'll be very busy probably the first time that most people realize that there is an air core, you know, but you do something. Not everything is, is clear, nor will be clear for some time. In a country like this, which gets heavy snow every 15 or 20 years, we're not obviously geared to clear everything overnight any, any more indeed than the people of Chicago or Norway or Sweden are able to do. Were local authorities well enough equipped to handle these kind of weather conditions, to clear roads, for example? Well, local authorities have, of course, a fair amount of equipment of their own, but there's a standing arrangement, and they were reminded of this last October in the circular, under which they can, in an emergency, hire equipment from anybody who has it available. And uh, this was done, and they were reminded of that uh, on Saturday morning, because I put about the Minister of the Environment, and he had already done so at 10 o'clock that morning, reminded the local authorities of their powers in this respect. Uh, so there was no difficulty uh, about their getting equipment. Obviously, they, w they wouldn't carry all the equipment needed for an emergency, which only arises every 15 or 20 years. But as long as they can hire it immediately, uh, and they're capable of doing what's necessary. So the complaint from, from example, Meath County Council saying that they hadn't the insurance cover to use private equipment, this didn't get in the way of most local authorities as far as the government's no, concerned? No, there isn't uh, an insurance problem because they have the authority to take action uh, 
and uh, we're reminded of that early on Saturday morning. You're happy offers from private companies, Mount Roadstone and so on, were utilised to the maximum? Oh yes, the Roadstone uh, and the Minister of Environment were in touch before 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Yes. Minister for Defence, Mr Tully, what is the estimated cost to the Defence Forces of mopping up during this operation? Well, as well as the Taoiseach said, it would be impossible to give an estimate at this stage because, uh, apart entirely from the fact that the uh, Air Corps people have been in the air all the time uh, for uh, since the emergency started, uh, and the fact that the Army have pr provided trucks all over the place, and Civil Defence uh, mustn't be forgotten either because they have 100, I think, out in Wicklow, and they have about 50 out in the Mead area. Uh, it is impossible uh, to count those things. Now, the ESB have also got assistance from uh, the army. They've got a special type of army truck, which is allowing them to go into areas where it would be impossible to go in otherwise. Now, how it would uh, anyone would estimate what that would cost at this stage? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money, but I believe it's very, very well worth it. And I would like to reiterate what the Taoiseach said. They, they were in operation from very early on Saturday morning. I heard somebody commenting on the radio wondering why the army didn't get out quickly enough. And I want to say that they couldn't possibly have got out any more quickly. And they've done a tremendous job and I think everybody should be very grateful to them for it. Uh, certainly lessons should be drawn and when it's over we will review the position and see what things could have been done better or more quickly or in what areas equipment might have been available. There are bound to be defects uh, in different areas and it's right that we should look and see where they are and that will certainly be done. Uh, it's not going to reveal any major major um, problems but it can certainly reveal ways of improving things for future occasions.